welcome to Shelly's World number one and welcome to video two of the Bible study. Today we are in Genesis 2 and we're reading to, uh, verse 4 through 25. Adam and Eve is the title. Here is the story of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The Lord God made the earth and the heavens. At that time, bushes had not appeared on the earth. Plants had not come up in the fields. The Lord had, God had not sent rain on the earth, and there wasn't any man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth, and they watered the whole earth whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man. He made him out of the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into him, and the man became a living person. The Lord God had planted, the gar planted a garden in the east. It was in Eden. There he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Therefore it was pleasing to look at and good to eat. The tree that gives life forever was in the middle of the garden. The tree that gives the ability to tell the difference between good and evil was also there. The river watered the garden. It flowed from Eden. From there it separated into four other rivers. The name of the first river is the Pishon. It winds through the whole land of Havilah. Havilah. God is found there. Gold is found there. The gold of that land is good. Onyx and sweet-smelling resin are also found there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher and... The fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God put, ma put the man in the Garden of Eden. He put him there to work its ground and to take care of it. The Lord God gave the man a command. He said, you can eat, eat the fruit of any tree that is in the garden, but you must not eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you can be sure that you will die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. The Lord God had formed all of the wild animals. He had also formed all the birds of the air. He had made all of them out of the ground. He brought them to the man to see what names he would give them. And the name of the man, the, the name the man gave each living creature, became its name. So the man gave names to all of the livestock. He gave names to all the birds of the air. He gave names to all of the wild animals. But Adam didn't find a helper that was right for him. So the Lord caused him to fall into a deep sleep while the man was sleeping. The Lord God took out one of his ribs. He closed up the opening that was in his side. Then the Lord God made a woman. He made her from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to him. The man said, Her bones have come, have come from my bones. Her body has come from my body. She will be named woman because she was taken out of man. That that's why a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. The two of them will become one. The man and his wife were both naked and they didn't feel any shame. Okay, let's see what the life essentials are. Not life essentials.
Okay, yes. So from two, two, three, we read that, uh, okay, two, seven, it starts. Of the dust of the ground implies that there is nothing fancy about the chemical elements of which we are made. The body is lifeless shell, is a lifeless shell until God brings it alive with his breath of life. When God removes his life-giving breath, our bodies once again return to dust. Our life and worth, therefore, come from God's spirit. Many boast of their achievements, only to fail soon after others have no achievements to boast about. But in reality, our worth comes from our achievements, but... For our, our worth comes not from our achievements, but from the God of the universe who chooses to give us the mysterious and miraculous gift of life. Value life as he does. Number eight through, uh, 2, 8 through 14. The Garden of Eden is a showcase of the magnificent beauty God intended for his creation. Eden was no accident. It it was a place designed to be fully enjoyed. The name of the tree of knowledge of good and evil implies that evil had already occurred, if not in the garden, then at the time of Satan's fall. Number 2, 9, 16, and 17. Where the tree of life and the tree of knowledge uh, were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge good of good and evil real trees, Two views are often expressed. The trees were real but symbolic weren't the trees were real but symbolic. Eternal life with God it was symbolized by eating of eating from the tree of life. The trees were real possessing special properties. By eating the fruit from the tree of life, Adam and Eve could have lived eternal life enjoying permanent relationship with God. With as God's children. In either case, Adam and Eve's sin separated them from the tree of life and thus kept them from obtaining eternal life. Interestingly, the tree of life again appears in a description in Revelation 22 of people enjoying eternal life with God. God gave Adam responsibility for the garden and told him not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Rather, rather than physically preventing him from eating, God gave Adam a choice and thus the possibility of choosing wrongly. God still gives us choices today and we too often choose wrongly. These wrong choices may cause us pain and irritation but they can help us learn and grow and make better choices in the future. Living with the consequences of our choices is one of the best ways to become more responsible. That was 2, 15 through 17. This is 2, 16 and 17. Why would God place a tree in the garden then forbid Adam to eat from it? God wanted Adam to obey, but he gave him the freedom to choose. Without choice, Adam would have been like a prisoner, forced to obey. The two trees presented an exercise, an exercise in choice with reward. For choosing to obey, and sad, re, with rewards for choosing to obey, and sad consequences for choosing to disobey. When faced with the choices, when faced with choose, when faced with the choice. Choose to obey God. 18 through 24. God's creative work was not complete until he made woman. He could have made her from the dust of the ground as he made man. He chose, however, to make her from the man's flesh and bone. In doing so, he illustrated for us that in marriage, man and woman symbolically, be symbolically become one flesh. This is a mystical union of the couple's hearts and lives. Throughout the Bible, God treats this special union seriously. If you are married or planning to be married, you, are you willing to keep the 
commitment which makes the two of you one. The goal in marriage should be more than friendship. It should be oneness. 2, 21 through 23. God styles and equips men and women in various tasks, but all lead to the same goal, honoring God. Man gives life to woman. Woman gives life to the world. Each role carries exclusive privileges. There is no room for thinking that one sex is superior to the other. God, this is 224. God gave marriage as a gift to Adam and Eve. They were created perfect for each other. Marriage was not just for convenience, nor was it brought about by any culture. It was instituted by God and has three basic aspects. aspects. The man leaves his parents in, in, and in a public act promises himself to his wife. The man and woman are joined together by taking responsibility for each other's welfare and by loving the mate above, above all others. The two become one in the intimacy and commitment of sexual union which is reserved for marriage. Strong marriages today include all three of these aspects. 25, 225. Have you ever noticed how a little child can run naked through a room full of strangers without embarrassment? He is not aware of his nakedness, just as Adam and Eve were not embarrassed in their innocence. But after Adam and Eve sinned, the embarrassment, shame, and awkwardness followed creating followed creating barriers between themselves and God. We often experience these same barriers in marriage. Ideally, a husband and wife had no, have no barriers, feeling no shame exposing themselves to each other or to God. Like Adam and Eve, we put on fig leaves because we have areas we don't want our spouse or God to know about. Then we hide just as Adam and Eve hid from God in marriage. Lack of spiritual, emotional, and intellectual intimacy usually precedes a breakdown of a physical intimacy in the same way when we fail to express our secret thoughts to God. We shut down our lines of communication with Him. And that's all for that. Let's. We're not really going to do a verse today. We are just going to decipher... God creating man and woman. So we're going to go God. We need the why or the who. Who is God? What equals man and woman? Why? The man was to work the ground. And then how he created man. from dust woman from man's rib where? on 
earth. So that's what your thing should look like. You should have God created man and woman. Who God? What? Man and woman created man and woman. Why? Man was to work the ground. Woman and woman was To help man. Man, he, how he created man from the dust and woman from man's rib. Where? On the earth. Or we really don't know. But it was near Eden, but it doesn't say where. So that's what the notes are. Thank you for tuning in and hit the subscribe button and the like button and hope to see you soon. Hope to do another one next week. Thank you for tuning in.